Hey everyone, this is Ed from Tech Talk. Welcome to my PowerShell series. This is part two. If you missed part one, um, please consider going back and watching it. It's in the description below. Uh, we created this um, little GUI. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, but in the end, if you follow my series, you're going to learn this stuff and much more. This will actually um, clear. It'll run. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can program some of these buttons and how to make some changes to the size of the text and the boxes. And but, so let's let me show you what we got to do now. Here we have the application that we created last time. And it's not very pretty, but you understand now how to create a form and that um, add a label, a text box, a run button. Now the run button doesn't work, but we'll we'll get to that. So let's let's make some changes to make this look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and um, go to the label. So you can change this to anything you want. Um, I'm going to turn this into an uptime application. If you're not going to follow along with what I'm going to do, that's fine. So um, I'm just going to say find computer. Or let's just say find um, last restart. How's that sound? We'll just call it last restart. And then when we hit play, You'll see that the because we have the the um, label auto size to true, it automatically moves it over. So, what do we need to do to the text box? The text box is now in the wrong spot, but we're not going to worry about that right at this moment. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's see what we can do about changing the font size. So maybe you know you can't see it very well. So let's go here and. We're going to go ahead and add dollar sign label. And we're going to do label dot font equals, oops. Boy, I can't type. If you were in the first one, you would know. Can't. equals new object and then system I'm all over the place system dot draw oops, dot drawing dot form and then we're going to do close parentheses but inside here we're going to do um, quotations and in between the quotations we're going to go ahead and put Arial, and then after the last quotation, we're going to do a comma, and then you can pick the font size. So to be to exaggerate it a little bit, I'm going to just put 15. It'll probably be a little bit big, but let's go ahead and try it and hit play. And we obviously type something wrong, which is not a big deal. Oops. So because see, I typed form instead of font. So. Let me go ahead and close this and then I'll type font, but you're going to do stuff like that. So when something doesn't go work, just go back and check your work. And, and as you can see, I'm not editing this as I go along because all the videos you watch where people are doing it perfectly, they're, they're editing what they're doing and, and that's fine. But I like to show people that I'm human and I make mistakes just like everybody else. So let's just leave it that big. All right, that's because, I mean, doesn't look horrible. Uh, could be worse. So let's address this text box. So now the text box is technically underneath our label. So we need to move it back over here somewhere. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And so we need to go to the text box now. And so what do we need, need to do to the text box? Well, for one... The text box location isn't quite where we need it. So if you remember from last time when we were in, um, if we hit play, the 100 represents this width here. And then the 15 represents the spot on the board that it's going to be on the height. So this is width and this is height. So where it's going to be is 
15 down. So I'm going to go ahead and close and I'm going to change this to 50. And I just like to double say those things so that that way it's clear as to um, what it is. So 150 is not doing us any good. So let me go ahead and change it to, um, oh, let's do 200 and see what happens. Let's go crazy. All right, 200. Um, yep, that's the location. So we're going to go close and we're going to go 250. Let's see what happens. Wow, there we are. Boom, 250. And 250 is not horrible, but now we have an issue where, and like I said, this is where this is just for fun. So, um, and this is to give you an idea how you can change these things on your own. You can make these as big or as small as you want to. So, here, we have a little bit of an issue because it looks kind of wonky but unfortunately the text box doesn't really give you a height or width option so in order to change the text box height we have to change the text box multi-line properties we're going to go ahead and do the usual dollar sign text box did we keep it running we did so we just got to make sure we close it otherwise Otherwise, uh, it won't let you do the automatic drop down dollar sign text box dot multi line dot or sorry about that text box dot dot multi line equals true or dollar sign true. And once you set that property, bam, there you have it. It's terrible. So now you know why that happened is because now that the multi-line is set to true, this number two over here is actually taking over. So the, the text box dot size equals 200 comma two really wasn't doing anything for the two. It was doing something for the 200, but it wasn't doing anything for the two. You could have just as well put zero there and it would have done nothing for there. But if we go back into here, let's close this. Now let's change that to, and we don't want to go getting crazy. I don't think we're just going to start with like 10 and we'll hit play and see where that gets us. So 10 is a little bit better. So we're going to go 50 just to see what it looks like and 50 is a little bit big but like i said this is something that you um have to to play play around with and find something that works for you and 27 is all right um it uh let's just go 30 for the fun of it and then we'll hit play 30 so but you get the idea so 30 30 is pretty close I, i'd be willing to bet 40 would almost nail it Maybe it'd be a little bit too big, but um, yeah, so as I figured, 40, so 38 probably would do the trick. Maybe let's go 37, seven for heaven. And then, and then there you go. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. So the whole idea is just to find out where you, where you want to be. And now we have this really small first GUI. So let's change the font size for um, here. And to make it easy on you, um, you could technically just come up here and copy the font here and then go back down to the text box and control V. Now, our sign text box dot font. So now we can go ahead and we're going to have to stop the program. So before you see the size of it here, we're going to go ahead and hit play. And now you see that's a little bit bigger. So um, when we go to program this, um, everything should fit in there nicely. So now you'll see that this auto centers, but you'll notice this one's not really auto centering. So what can we do to align the text a little bit better? So let's go into the text box again, and we're going to hit enter, and we're going to go dollar sign text box dot auto 
All right, text align. That's maybe that's it. Text align. See, I mean, I'm just I'm just winging it here myself, my friends. I mean, so equals the text align equals. Um, let's see. Let's go. Some some of the times you can do uh, center, so we can just type center and see if it goes and hit play, and it did, and it worked. Oh, let's go back here. Here we have the the first GUI, um, which we can change now to. So right there, what I'll do is I'll change this to. Um, last reboot time. And then we'll hit play. And so find last restart. And. And like I said, you you can you can change all of this any way you want. This is just giving you an idea what you can do. So now I'll show you a color, all the different colors that you can possibly use. So if you go online, and I'll give you the link below, there is, but as you can see, there's all of these different colors. So if you liked any of these, you could literally uh, go ahead and turn your your background or anything else you could change the backgrounds to to meet any of those colors and there are a bunch of them and it's nice you have so many different options and i'll have this in the link below so that you can uh, go ahead and uh, click on it and so something i like to do and i'm going to start right with the run button i like to set these to true um so the size to be true so a dollar sign well let me stop this first hit close and then um dollar sign button dot auto size equals dollar sign true and then All right, so as you can see, nothing happened. So the reason for that is because we already have the size set to 7550. So that's it seems as though that trumps the um, auto size. But if we close this and then we just let's just we won't remove the size yet. We'll just go hashtag and then that will remove that temporarily so we don't have to retype it just in case we decide to put it back and then if we hit play now you can see that it auto sized it so um and that's fine so what we could do instead of changing the button size itself let's change the font size and we'll go up here and well let's just type it in it's good to practice typing so dollar sign button now oh, we got to turn this off we're going to do dot font but we're going to go close we're going to go dot font equals and then we're going to go new object oops oops i don't know what that's doing button dot font equals new object system dot drawing dot font and then we'll close this 
we'll close this and then we're going to go we're going to put Arial. And we're just going to test and see if it's case sensitive and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put uh let's just say 14 and then close the bracket and then what are we missing now we're missing the comma so go ahead and put the comma in there and let's hit play so now as you can see as it's um as it increased in size uh, the button got bigger now let's say that you you don't really like the auto size look you can definitely come over here just remark this out temporarily undo this and then let's just go ahead and look and see what it looks like and then we'll close this out and and as you can see nothing really changed it just took the the size and now let's go ahead and lower the height of this thing let's go we're not going to split it in half but let's go to like 30 and see what that looks like so that's a little bit too small so let's go to 40 hit play and let's do the the length of it let's just go to like 80 just to see what it looks like and i'm just gonna go let, let's just go 90. but i guess i'm being a little too fussy but you get the idea you can change this you can change this any size you want to by just adding these little bit of um changes and like i said if you come back here and you undo this um most likely you're not really going to see any difference it's probably going to stay the same and it did and you can change this um position of this at any time so let me do this what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to add a an exit button and a clear button and then i'll be back and we're going to program the run exit and clear all right so as you can see i added three more buttons they're not perfect by any stretch of the means but i just added them so that i can show you how to program an exit button a clear button and then i'll go ahead and show you how how to run and find the actual last reboot time of your computer okay so the first thing we need to do is go to the top and i like to go ahead and um put it right up at the beginning of the of the document and i usually just put a bunch of these things here and i'll say these are click events and i'll put all the click events underneath here and the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the exit button so we'll do so i believe i named it exit button so down here you'll notice i named the button i created all these buttons exit button um and what i'm going to do is and they're all the same thing and i i just copied and pasted um and i renamed the button and i and i renamed the the variable um so i'm going to go up here and say exit button dollar sign exit button well let me stop this first and we'll go dollar sign exit button underscore click equals open and close bracket and basically you're going to put something between that and actually i forgot we're actually going to go ahead and put the brackets here so inside these brackets we're going to call the exit button so we're going to go dollar sign actually we're going to call the form form dot close and then just close the bracket and 
and that's it that's all we're going to do there so now in order for us to actually get this to work because if we if we hit play right now we're going to go ahead and hit play and hit exit nothing's going to happen so what we need to do is come down here where the exit but button is And then we're going to create the click event down here. So we're going to go dollars, dollar sign, oops, dollar sign exit button dot add. Underscore click. Close the bracket and then we're just going to type in dollar sign exit button. underscore click and then close the bracket now let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens and then let's hit exit and all right so let's go ahead and program the clear button so the clear button um we can go up here and in here we're just going to go ahead and we'll create the same type of, of button click. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go below this and then we're going to create our little hashtag so that we know, um, uh, well, we can just do a single hashtag and then we'll say um, clear click or clear button click, whatever you want to name it. Um, and we can do the same up here if you want. Um, oops. Exit button. Click events. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, you don't need, or you can just leave them if you if you don't want to. That's up to you. Um, so now we're going to do the the same thing. So except we're going to use the dollar dollar sign clear button underscore click equals and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to make the um, nice little brackets that we had there so right here we can um, hit enter so these come down here and then we'll put the code in here um, so if if it's clicked what do we want it to do so if we hit play now what do we want to happen here because if we hit run this is going to have a time so if we hit clear we want it to um clear the text box and that's one reason why i typically don't put anything in or or I could just go to last re I can you can do two or th one or two things you can actually change this so that it goes back to, to the um, text box equals last reboot time so in this case um, you can type uh, dollar sign text box dot text equals um, what did I say that was last boot time? Last reboot time. We'll go here. But to show you that it's actually working, um, I'll just say um nice try. Do it again. Nice try, Vermin. And then go like this. And Let's go ahead and stop this. We'll hit exit because we already programmed that. And now let's, oh, we were missing one thing though. We have to go down here <clears throat> and we have to reference this clear button underscore click. So we're gonna go back down to here and to the clear button. And we're gonna do similar to what we did down here for the form control or for the exit button we're going to go dollar sign clear button
dot add underscore click and then we're going to go dollar sign dollar sign um clear button underscore click and then we will close the bracket and now we'll go ahead and try it and we'll hit play and we'll hit clear nice try do it again so as you can see now if i had i not if i had i not put nice try do it again you wouldn't have known it was working it just wouldn't have done anything so of course if this was working and the run button was already set and you hit run and it pulled the time then it would you would have been good to go but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit exit and now i'm going to show you how you can pull the time for from a computer and now you've got the fundamentals where you can go ahead and just practice messing around with forms so let me go ahead and show you how to find the uptime of your local computer and down the road i will show you how the next coming up and coming videos i'll show you how to do domain domain computers all right so now for the difficult button now typically i wouldn't do this in a beginner tutorial <clears throat> so but because you were so patient and you um you know you made it this far and this might be something you're actually looking for so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the, the the button click event again and we're going to do a hashtag and we're going to do the run button or the run click event and <clears throat> here we're going to go ahead dollar sign run button underscore click and then we're going to do the the brackets again and then what i do is just click in between here oh we forgot the equals oops equals and then go ahead and hit a, a, a few spaces between here uh, leave yourself some room because what we're going to do is we're going to add a line of code that's a little bit bigger than what we've been doing um the first thing we need to do is um set a variable to or a container to hold it so we'll call it um dollar sign last boot Sorry, I, our lights just flickered. I thought we were losing our light. And instead of making you suffer through me typing the whole thing in, I'm just going to control V and paste the code in here. But it's just management.managementDateTimeConverter, colon, colon, date time. And then just copy this exactly the way you see it. But unfortunately, what this is going to do, you'll you'll go ahead if we if we just run this obviously we didn't add the the rest of the run run button click event down below so it's not going to work anyways but this will just put the container this will put the information here so this when we hit the run button it'll have some information it just won't know what to do with it so now we got to tell it what to do with that information so now we're going to go and say dollar sign text box dot text equals dollar sign last boot now what we've done is we've run the date the get time function and then we've held it in this container here and now we're calling the container and sending it to the text box dot text now it's still not going to work until we go down here into the text button or the um the run button so you're going to add this dollar sign run button dot add underscore click just like we did all the rest of them and then you're going to go ahead and hit play and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit run and see if it works and so far it's not looking too good so i'm going to hit exit we'll run it again 
So nothing's happening. So I'm going to guess, let me hit exit. Let me just take a look at the code again and just make sure that we didn't mess anything up. So it's called last boot, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Text box out. Boo. It's. Did we type it right? Last boot. That's correct. Let's go down to run the run button. Um, and that's button click. So. Oh, run button dot click. Well, that's why. So, so we do run button dot click, and that's why I say it's important to go back and look at your your code because even I make mistakes. And if I'm making mistakes, most likely you're going to do it as well. So, go ahead and and that's just the product of me trying to keep the video short. So I'm kind of rushing it a little bit, but now that I did that, we should be able to get the time now. And there you go. Now, if you don't think there's enough space in there, so I'll hit clear. Um, so we can technically go back because that was only put there the clear button um we put that in there because we just wanted to, that was our way of testing to see if it worked um so the clear button we technically want it to be nothing so we removed that whole thing now we're going to go ahead and hit play we'll hit run and then we'll hit clear and then that's it so we can hit or you can um when you hit so you can um you can still put you know find time and hit play and so when you hit run you can just go clear and it'll do find time that's up to you that's strictly up to you but that's pretty much it my friend so for at least for this video so the next time i come back i'm going to show you how you can add a another button a root reboot button and that's about it my friends i hope you like this uh series so far please consider liking subscribing and sharing all right thanks have a great day